Welcome to another one of uh, Lieutenant Captain Lieutenant Thompson's adventures. This one uh, was of this morning when we sailed off with a full galley. Beim BDU wird viel über ihre letzte Patrouillenfahrt geredet. Gute Arbeit. Dies sind die heutigen Aufträge vom BDU. Streng geheim. This morning we took the patrol for sector CG, which is uh, along the Spanish and Portuguese coast. As you can see here, that's our destination and it's only a short trip. So let's get there and before we do so, we always I always like to hide the plan. When I'm uh, leaving port, I plot a course towards the middle of this uh, entrance because if I do that correct, I can do so and go to travel mode quite easy. And in travel mode, I of course need a navigator. There's a change of shift sometimes happening and of course we did a research. When I shift my um, Uzo, I first put the second watch officer on the flag so he can uh, easily take over the Uzo and uh, yeah, how do you say, I am not uh, vulnerable for plane attacks if the Uzo transfer takes a while and then you have uh, compressed time. So in this way I maintain my Uzo and I also have the radar coverage. So for this, uh, this example, how I change my Uzo shift. We have reached the patrol sector. Already in just in the patrol sector, we find a first propeller noise, and I try to investigate them in between the patrol sector. But I've just already sailed out of the patrol sector, but that's okay. We have our first contact. Ships are now detected by sonar first, so I can start investigating what kind of ships these are and which of the two I, uh, it's so to say my main target. And that's of course the one with the most tonnage. They're now also in visible range, so I can put my complete uh, team on uh, on investigating the ships and then you see how fast uh, that actually goes. Like a, like a, how do you say, a hunting animal, I'm just sitting and waiting for them to fall in my trap. And I'm going to attempt a double shot, hitting the the, how do you say the most heavy target first and then the what lighter target second but before it can start evasive maneuvers in trying to avoid the further uh, torpedo impact Before I made the second shot, I readjusted the position of my submarine in order to get a more clear shot. And now both torpedoes are on the way.
The second torpedo is also on the way. The first torpedo made a minimal damage. The second uh, is also a hit and also minimal damage. Again we do a double shot. see an example of uh, what is being called as an unsinkable ship it's a NA1 freighter which is only lightly loaded and the two torpedoes did not damage it at all so I'm not going to waste further torpedoes on that one anymore the second one is now heavily damaged and I can finish that off with a third torpedo as you can see fire breaks out that ship is going down it's already being abandoned by its crew so yes they are might be unsinkable ships but they're also the ships which are really light so maybe in physics it's it makes some sense that they are hard to sink if not impossible but even Mickey and Mallory left someone alive so I'm going to leave them for what they are and I'm going to continue my patrol Although submerged for a while, because I want to get out of plane range, range before I uh, emerge from the water again. This is uh, one of the reasons why I think the snorkel is, is one of the must-haves. The deck wash position makes you really vulnerable for, uh, for plane attacks here when you uh, have no radar. Being submerged has done a has a major advantage there. As we call in our first kill, we also get the transmission from HQQ. First we listen to some music and then we'll decode the mission. And we're sent out to find a ship and probably sink it as well. When I uh, emerge from the water, I always take down the snorkel because uh, that's probably way much more visible than a uh, ship normally is. Here I already put it out because I'm going to submerge the uh, periscope there. As I got a lot of ships to sink, this is a little bit worrisome because I have only so much many torpedoes but uh, there might be a bug where sometimes the ship is uh, being uh, listed double but I here have a convoy full of freighters where I was really was afraid there would be some corvettes in between which is not the case so I can nicely investigate see what ship I actually need so I know what are my main targets and what are maybe extra bonuses. So I know which ships to take on. Uh, I'm going to do a double shot again. And in this case, because there is uh, quite some uh, distance between the two ships, I might try to hit the first two ones simultaneously. But that requires a nice angle, so the second ship uh, is easy to hit. As I have now uh, got a lock on most freighters, I can now uh, commence 
with uh, shooting the first couple ones down. Get my mechanic ready to quickly reload all the torpedo tubes because we're going to use many torpedoes. As you see, I maneuver also in backwards because uh, I like to have a distance of around a kilometer between myself and the target. Two torpedoes on the way, now let's see if they simultaneously hit the two targets. They almost do. Two ships are seriously damaged, so I can uh, now revert my attention to the uh, to the next ship, there's already one ship being abandoned, which is nice, so it will come to a stop. Now repositioning for the second Empire Bell ship. The first one actually still has uh, speed, so I have to get that later on as well with a second torpedo. I have now already fired three torpedoes at my three targets. I have one target who is dead in the water and another one who's trying to escape, and now I have to catch up with that one and fire another torpedo at it. We have serious damage at our first target, a third target. And also that ship is going to be abandoned. So these reports of unsinkable ships, in my, I, I, they might only address to the NI-1 uh, vessels because these Empire Explorers, Empire Bells and Empire Towers, they go uh, down. This is a little bit of a tricky shot because it's now not at a nice uh, perfect uh, straight angle, but at a quite sharp angle. Let's see if we get a hit. Nicely made ship, fire on board. That is most of the times the sign of a ship going down. The ship is already being abandoned, so that means that the fire will make sure that that ship sinks. I have managed to sink one um, target, one of the Empire Bell, it is gone off my target list, but I'm going to have to sink another Empire Bell in order to complete the mission. My captain is going to sleep. To put my uh, chief boatswain on the attack uh, periscope in order to maintain my field of view. This seems also to be a good hit, nice midship, and it's already being abandoned. I have only two front torpedoes left and two in the back. And my idea is now to let the rest go 
and so I can finish off this uh, last chip before any uh, reinforcements arrive because I probably have to emerge and shoot them down with, uh, with the deck gun because they're so nicely close together that might be a quick job Um, you have the ability to sign uh, three sailors to an officer and my idea is actually that that only goes that that actually only helps you with uh, the deck gun. I have seen no other operation on the boat where you can use three sailors except also when you are quartermaster. So the assigning three sailors to a uh, to a officer is only comes only um, how do you say uh, it's advantage for the uh, for the one who has also the um, skill of shooting the deck gun and the flag gun and the flag gun actually the officer is all by himself with the deck gun he can get the aid of three sailors and then the reloading process is uh, very fast well these are some nice shots of, uh, of Gruber with only three shells he puts uh, two of the uh, abandoned vessels on fire so they uh, are going down, the third already has an axe in it, mean that it's uh, it's goner. And I'm not going to chase these other vessels I think. Although I'm not sure yet, maybe we go to periscope depth. But there we have only two torpedoes left. So maybe the best option is to leave the vicinity, take our, take our kills and just be done with it. secret for a good running vessel is to have the bellies full and here you see we plot a course away from uh, from the Strait of Gibraltar away from this uh, busy busy uh, route for freighters and other warships and now we have to get out of range of these these vessels so I don't know if it's being used but they might of course report our position so I stay submerged for a while in order to avoid any detection as you can see we have completed our complete mission all the ships we needed to sink are sunk and we're now in travel mode underwater getting away from the crime scene and nicely counting our blessings before we emerge again to complete our patrol and head back to harbor here again you see I use the flag gun as an intermediate uh, to change the Uso and we nicely finished our patrol so we can get home quickly see some mess over the horizon but we choose to ignore them again we have only two torpedoes in the front two in the back left here I have a little bug with uh, restoring the galley but eventually it works When we come back in harbor I can install the improved toilets, that's a privilege my uh, my men really earned. They have finished uh, already their ninth patrol, so they're actually seasoned vets and it's time to call in. The mission complete, so we can check our summary. We have been out for four days and four hours, we sank four ships, we completed all our missions, everybody reserved, deserved their rewards. Now let's back. Oh, uh, let's get back home to La Rochelle.
sometimes people still ask the question, hey, how do you dock? Well, this is how I do it. I make sure I have the pair in my docking position inside and I just plot a course towards it. Keep in mind that the turning radius of the vessel for a 180 degree turn is about 400 meters. We restore the flag and I say goodbye.